guy. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, so my microphone is only for the videotaping because the students who were not able to attend these sessions, we are going to send the video and presentation of uh, this new exchange program. So please be quiet because I won't be able to speak really very loudly, but I think you can all hear me really well. So today I will, uh, I will introduce you to new exchange programs that we have here in our university and first is JAMIX. Uh, so what is JAMIX? JAMIX uh, is the program of the Educational Commission of Foreign Medical Graduates, ECFMG. I think like more or less you know about uh, uh, this uh, commission. It's a world leader in promoting the quality of the health care uh, it's a leader in the um, exams, which we call the USMLE, USA exams. So it's a very big, big uh, worldwide company. And JAMIX is the service of the ECFMG. Uh, so our institution, TMA, uh, became a global partner of the JAMIX this year in 2018. And we are the first partners from the Georgian. So far, we are the only one from the whole Georgian University so this program is only here so far so we are very proud of this really uh, so what the JAMIX offers to the universities so first of all it offers a global partnership so there are more than 23 countries around the world who became the partners of the JAMIX program and there are about 51 uh, universities who are participating in the JAMIX um, uh, program. So now I will show you the website and I will show you the global partners and the map so you can see how many countries are participating in this exchange program. Okay. Uh, so this is the website of the program, JAMIX Electives Org. Uh, so as the other students of the TMA, you will also uh, get, will get this uh, presentation uh, via the uh, electronic system energy. So you'll be able to go, to go to this website so you don't have to make any notes. And here we can see the global partners. So actually this is a map and we are also here. So these are the countries uh, where, where different countries or, of electives are available through this JAMIX program. So uh, where you can go and take um, your um, um, uh, electives that you will choose. So we are also here with the other countries and there is an African region, there is Asia, Central America and Caribbean, Europe, Middle East, North America, South America, so like almost the, it's like in the whole globe except of the Australia, so uh, it's a really very, uh, very big global partnership. Uh, okay, so let's go to the next one. So what uh, the JAMIX program offers to our students? So first of all, it has the access to the electives which are offered by the JAMIX partners. So you will have access um, if you register for the JAMIX program to all of these electives that are offered on the website. Review the information of all available electives. Um, uh, the process actually of the registration and participation is really very simple. So there are no uh, like the recruitments, for example, uh, which uh, which are in the fall or in the spring. So there are no timelines for that. It's an all years round. So any time you can register for any of these electives, and you can apply to an unlimited numbers of elective placements. So uh, you are not restricted 
restricted to choose only one elective, uh, you can apply to many of them. And even if you are using this program and if you will go for study for one elective, you'll be still able to apply the same program for the next year. So it's, a, it's up to you and there is a really uh, big choice. And of course, you'll benefit from this increased opportunities to participate in the global dialogue about the student exchanges, international conferences, and etc. So this is the website, as I have already uh, shown to you. Now let's uh, go and see uh, how the registration site looks. So today I want to explain you how to register for the JAMIX program, what is the procedure for this uh, when you decide to participate in. So for the students, uh, registration site uh, is uh, separate. It's uh, students JAMIX electives org. You will. Um, also get this website and uh, uh, you should go uh, uh, to the uh, like they are new to Jamix and establish Jamix account so this is your first step to do to establish Jamix account when you start opening your account there you will receive four different mails so be really very careful because this Jamix system is very sensitive to the passwords and usernames and it's very difficult to change them so just uh, write down and save everything that you get by the email so you will get a, a new username by the Jamix system and you'll get a new password from the Jamix system and then you have to log in uh, and change this name and uh, passwords there uh, okay so uh, this is a very first step you establish a Jamix account and then what you are doing so you have to wait for the approval uh, of course there are some eligibility criteria for the participation in the Jamix program uh, so all universities uh, have this who are searching and uh, uh, choosing the students uh, who are qualified to uh, participate in this system so there will be one one week waiting period before your uh, account will be activated. Uh, unless your account is approved and verified uh, by us, by TMA, you won't be able to see there everything and you won't be able to log in into the system. So uh, when you make a registration, just wait one week because this one week uh, individually for each student will be the period uh, when the uh, uh, academy administration, dean's office, international affairs department, and quality assur assurance department will consider your application and will check your history. So, what is the eligibility criteria for the student who will participate in this program? So, first of all, uh, the student should not have any financial debts. So. Uh, he should be like uh, financially okay, don't have uh, any problems regarding this. Uh, what about the academic performance? So GPA, uh, your GPA should be at least two points. So if you have like less than two points GPA, it's uh, really, really very low. And so two points is C. So um, those students uh, who have less than two, please try somehow to make your GPA higher maybe for the next year uh, because like you'll be sending your transcripts uh, to the other institutions and like uh, some of them they have even higher requirements so uh, they have like 2.5 2.7 but uh, we decided to be like uh, two points because I think like an, it's a uh, fair and it shows your academic performance so the student also should have a good conduct history so good behavior in the academy and after these uh, steps you are eligible uh, to continue your registration uh, for this program. 
So after uh, after we approve uh, your account, uh, then you can again log in into the system, and there will be different challenge questions. So this is for the password. Uh, I told you that Gemix is a very like the case sensitive system. So uh, please remember or write down the questions uh, that the system is asking you because every time you have to log in into the system, you have to answer uh, these different questions. So uh, you are not using only your password for the registration. You have to answer these questions. So like for example, in which city you are born and or for example, what is your eye color, etc. So they are very uh, easy ones, but you may forget and this process uh, is very difficult uh, if you want, for example, if you forget the password or this question, these are like the many steps. Of, so for you, will be uh, more easy to remember all this information. So uh, at least when you are able to get into the system and your accounts are uh, verified, uh, I received also the several students account uh, before uh, before this presentation, and I verified uh, them. So I don't know, like those of you, uh, I remember, for example, Sophia and Adana. So I don't know if the other ones also were registered there. You'll be now able to see um, uh, their everything. Uh, okay, so when you uh, log in into the system, uh, this is a welcome, you'll see this welcome message uh, from the Jamix, and then you can go to the uh, link and see there the ambassadors network. This means that all the different universities in other countries, they have their student ambassadors. For example, here uh, in TMA, we have uh, Sofia Gamhot Elashvili, she is our ambassador, so she is uh, please, <laughs> can you stand up? So she is responsible. Um, she is responsible uh, for the incoming students uh, to give them information about the accommodation, about our university, etc. Also, there is another ambassador uh, here in TMA, uh, David. I don't know if he's here. Oh, he's here, David Gogilashvili. He is also our ambassador. They are chosen for two years, and after two years, we will choose new two ambassadors. So the other universities, they also have these networks. Uh, so the students from the other universities, uh, like here we have, will be helping you in these uh, processes. Uh, they will answer your questions. Uh, you can contact them, uh, have chat with them, so etc. Ask them any uh, important questions. Okay, uh, so next one. Uh, these are the different uh, uh, different um, parts uh, of uh, the application process. Uh, after the welcome message, we see there my profile, and here you just have to fill your profile information. So uh, put your name and surname exactly as uh, it is in your passport. Um, uh, you put their suffix or not. It's not necessary. Uh, your gender, date of birth, etc. So you start filling uh, uh, your account. Uh, next one, uh, next uh, part is my documents. Here you upload all required documents uh, that uh, are requested from the uh, university who offers the electives. And these documents may vary upon the university. So all uh, the institutions, they decide by themselves what kind of the documents uh, you will need. And depending on which elective you are applying, uh, so everything is online. You are not doing any uh, hard copy process or mailing things. Uh, everything is done, so all the process is done online. So you can upload your documents in the PDF file and only the passport uh, photo is uh, uploaded in, in the GPG uh, format. 
So uh, you can do this anytime, uh, like when you'll be ready to apply to the GEMIC system. You can upload the documents or delete them or uh, like change these documents. So you can log in there anytime and do this process um, anytime you wish. Uh, then you go to, uh, uh, to find an institution and here uh, you can find uh, the electives that you want to apply. And uh, I will show you, so for example, it's a, like a big list. Uh, I, I was able to make a screenshot only uh, for the part of this. For example, there is an Ireland uh, Gateway School of Medicine. And here we see the different electives that are offered. So uh, uh, some institutions, they offer, uh, for example, several electives. So uh, for you, uh, you have like a big choice. Uh, now, for example, if we uh, click like to one of these universities, uh, it is how the preview will look, and they have like the different parts. They are electives offers, timelines, uh, and fees, student life and housing, application requirements, resources. So I will show you how it will look like uh, and show you the example of our university, like how we can, um, how we are doing this, how we accept the other students. So the same will be for the other universities. Okay, so we are here. For example, if the student from the other country chooses our university to apply elective uh, here with us, he'll be able to see this information. So the same thing will be for you, but uh, you'll see the other universities there. So I'm not able to show you everything from the student's profile because uh, I can only log in from the uh, university profile because I don't have the access. So only you who will be registered there and approved and verified only you will have access uh, to see everything and choose the elective. Uh, the only thing uh, that I'll be away uh, that will be available for me to see, for example, your documents there or help you with uploading the documents or make some checks, but all the other information is closed uh, for me. That's why I'm showing just uh, as an example our university. So can you go see and you can see, for example, here in TM. Oh, you don't. Sorry. Eleven. Uh, I um, I need an ID. You cannot see this. It's stuck. So because, like, I opened the website. Okay. Okay. I think that you see the same stuff. Uh, okay, now it's good. Okay, so here we are. Um, here are electives offered. And you can see that we offer electives in differential diagnosis, endocrinology, internal medicine. Uh, they are all open. Some of them are here uh, in autumn and uh, two of them are in spring. Uh, next there is a timeline and fees. Of the electives, so the other uh, universities will have the uh, same interface. There'll be the dates of these um, electives and fees. Uh, actually, the GEMIX program considers uh, these electives to be free of charge. But maybe some of the universities may have some fees, but of course they are not very high. They may have some registration fees or um, other for the other stuff, but this is not like the um, same as you pay, for example, for your study. Uh, we here don't 
have the fee and also the other universities, like most of them, they are free of charge and you don't have to pay anything uh, for that. The only thing you have uh, to pay is your accommodation and travel expenses when you go to the foreign country. So you are not paying for the elective. Then there is a student's uh, life and housing. There will be the information about the housing, culture, visa information if they offer any kind of the orientation, safety and other useful websites. So very important thing to look at uh, during the application will be uh, application requirements. So what do they require for you, from you, what kind of the documents you have to upload. So this may be the copy of the passport, your CV, letter of recommendation, motivation, uh, photograph, proof of proficiency in English or proof of enrollment. So uh, there are also the post acceptance documents after the university will accept you for the elective you have to upload these documents later. So you don't have to um, upload post acceptance documents in advance. So they are uh, upon arrival documents for example the criminal background check or immunizations or other documents that will be requested uh, from the other universities. So first for the application process you only uh, read this uh, required documents and uh, of course if you decide to apply for the elective you start to prepare uh, and upload these documents. Uh, there is also the resource part so we don't uh, have filled it yet. There will be different resources that the other universities are providing and very important contact information. So here we have a lot of phone numbers and emails, so most of them here are mine because uh, I am the contact person for the other students and other universities here in TMA. So in case they have some questions, they'll be sending me emails or calling me. So when you'll be in the system, you'll see the same contact persons uh, for the other universities and you can contact them, ask questions about um, elective. So it's really very easy. Nothing is really complicated in this uh, registration process. Uh, where, where we are? Yes. Here, uh, so uh, so after you finish your registration and after your uh, documents uh, all are uploaded, uh, there will be a click to, uh, to send your uh, request and you'll be able to send the request for the participation in the elective. And also you'll be able to call or send email to the other universities so that uh, it will be uh, very easy for you to get the information about the approval process and as uh, soon as soon as you receive your approval from the other university, you'll be able to uh, plan your travel there and go for electives. So Jamix uh, usually uh, offers one month, uh, two months and three months electives. And depending on which kind of elective it is, there may be extracurricular activity, but uh, there may be also something that is similar to our curriculum, so we will be able able to make a credit recognition for you. For example, if you choose an elective there that is uh, like a subject, for example, endocrinology, and also here in the university you have to take the subject, but you want to go there and take an elective there, you bring uh, the credits, this means you pass the exam in the other university, you bring your grades from there, and we recognize your credit so you don't have to take this same subject here at our university. So um, it, it is also very important because like uh, comparing to the other exchange programs or the summer schools, you'll be able to go there for example during the study process and not necessary during the summer months if there will be some similarities in the subjects that you have to pass here or you have to take in the other university. Okay, so uh, uh, before I start talking about the other program offered, if you have uh, questions about the GEMIX now, I can answer all questions that you have. Yes. Um, what happens if there are not similarities in the program? So 
So if uh, if the subjects are not similar, yeah. Uh, question: Yes. Uh, what happens if uh, the subjects, for example, are not similar? So there is uh, different ways uh, for taking them. So for example, if they are during the offered during the winter months or summer months, when you don't have the study process, it will be very easy for you to register and uh, take the elective. There. Uh, but of course, if you have already passed this subject, uh, it doesn't make sense uh, for you. And I think, uh, yes, maybe it will be interesting, but of course, it's better to, to choose something that you have not passed here. But uh, there, there may be also the situation, for example, uh, uh, it's uh, offered in the merge, right? So uh, you have to pass another clinical subject in the merge, like immunology, for example, but you want to go there um, do, um, and take endocrinology. But um, you can still go there, um, take this subject, and when you return, you take the immunology in the next semester. But you don't take your endocrinology um, because, like, you bring credits from there. So you can ask this to the dean's office uh, when you have to make a decision about which uh, elective to choose, and it's not a very difficult process. So they may uh, advise you, for example, which one uh, is better. So anyway, if uh, there, uh, if the if it is the subject which is similar. In uh, of the TMA subjects, you'll get your credits recognized here. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Yes. The idea why this study is now presenting the presentation later, when you decide to apply, you will not go later to her and ask how to make application and then the questions. Now is the chance. She can't make that individual. You are so many. That's why now she's cleaning. <laughs> okay, so please click now. Uh, watch later. You can revise the presentation, but you can't later go and say, "Please upload my uh, documents." Okay, you have to do it independently. This is something international project which thinks that you are mature enough to do your services. Okay, don't think. Okay, I'll just get information later. She will do it for you. She will not be able to do it for you. Okay, you have to listen now carefully, you have to remember everything, you can revise later with this registered application and then do the things alone at home. So please now think about the questions and later ask if you have any questions now, mm -hmm. any doubts please. Okay, so I'll be still, of course, answering all your questions, but I won't be able to explain all of you like individually this registration process. But I think in general, it's not very difficult. So actually, it's very easy. So you also get this uh, video and get this presentation. So I don't think that uh, you have like any kind of the problems. But of course, uh, anytime you can still come and ask me like, um, some doubtful questions but you will uh, also be able after the registration and verification to send an email or call the representative of the university that you have chosen for the elective so they will answer you better I mean about their electives uh, so I'll be uh, more uh, available for the international students who are coming here to our university so I don't think that uh, you have any any problem so uh, I don't know maybe you have also the other um, questions about the program if not um, so you can ask uh, the questions later now let me introduce you another option uh, that we have uh, in TMA and this is uh, AMO opportunities so these are clinical uh, rotations for the students uh, for the students who are on the uh, basic uh, subjects for the students who are already studying clinical st subjects and also it's available for the newly graduate so even if you are graduating this year it will be still available for you these are one month clinical rotations in the United States so only United States no other country and this is the web address 
uh, of this uh, AMO Opportunities Org. So you can uh, go to this website and see in details what is this. So what it offers. So this is a clinical experiences that are used to build qualifications for US residency programs, especially for those students who are interested um, to go to the United States, uh, who want to pass the USMLE exams. Uh, so this uh, uh, practice is very similar to the USMLE step two. Um, if you go there and get this uh, practice, um, it will be more easy for you to pass the USMLE two-step exams because it's like the United States system. Also, you can improve your job application, so it's uh, your experience there and reach your medical college. Uh, so all the benefits that you get from these uh, uh, experiences uh, in the foreign countries. Uh, so what kind of the rotations they offer? Uh, as I have told you, they have one month rotations and you can choose uh, like more months there, but usually like each rotation is uh, one month, so four weeks period. So they have observerships and they have hands-on rotations. So what is the difference between them? Observerships are for the students uh, who are in the um, so the, for the first, uh, second, and third year students who are studying the basic subjects. So observerships in uh, wolf shadowing and you will have the supervisor there. So you'll be in the clinic, but you won't be able to be involved in some procedures. So you'll be just standing and watching how the other people are doing this, how they are communicating with the patient. So uh, this is the world. So you'll be observing all uh, the process and in the hands-on rotations they are available for the students so uh, here from the four, uh, so fourth uh, year uh, who already started, uh, started the clinical practice and for um, uh, newly graduates so you'll be able to be involved in uh, whole, this whole clinical process. This is the difference. So you'll be observer or you'll be participant. So I think it's more, of course they both are interesting, but uh, um, like in my opinion, it's more interesting to go there if you are going for the clinical rotation, especially to uh, uh, choose uh, the uh, second one. So hands-on rotation. Uh, what is the eligibility criteria? Criteria uh, for this rotation. Uh, this is um, that you uh, should be either a current medical or nursing student or a recent uh, graduate. And proof of eligibility is required in the form of a letter of good standing from the school uh, or your medical degree. So if you are a newly graduate, you just uh, provide your diploma. And if you are a student, we provide a letter for you that you have a good standing in the university. So this is um, the document uh, to prove your eligibility for this program. Uh, so now registration and peace. Uh, actually, these clinical rotations, um, uh, they are not free. They cost from 1,000 to 3,000 um, uh, USD uh, dollars. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, they have made an exception for our university so uh, we have uh, will have first two clinical rotations free of charge so the means that our first two students uh, who will go for these clinical rotations, they won't pay anything. Um, and uh, that's why the uh, selection criteria for the students for this program will be a little bit different. So you have to, of course you have to register on the EMO website, but if you want to get this rotation for free uh, during the November month, you have to register at the office manager uh, she has the registration form so we will choose the best two students who will get uh, this opportunity to go to this um, elective for free otherwise of course you can uh, like there are no any kind of the restriction uh, you can like finance yourself so you'll be still able to go there and pay but if you want to get it for free 
you have to make the registration here. Also, they have the, um, uh, again, uh, the registration process is very similar. Uh, you are going online. Uh, to the system, uh, making your account there, but for the AMO, uh, making account is much more easier. It's like an opening your email, you just put your email and uh, passwords there. Uh, so this is how the system looks from inside when you have already registered there. Uh, here you will see your current applications, uh, if you make an application. Next one um, uh, is your profile you have to fill um, so your pa passport uh, information, your uh, phone number, email, etc. So all the demographic information and also you can choose your preferred month. Uh, so uh, for the clinical rotations um, I think for you preferred months will be during your summer or winter holidays because um, comparing to the GEMI uh, this is an extracurricular activity, so they are not considered um, uh, as a subject of these activities because these are in the clinic. So you have to, as you have access there to many different departments. So you are not studying there; you have a practice. So that's why you uh, you can uh, choose your preferred ones because the system then will be offering you. Um, depending on your preferred months, different kinds of the so here uh, now suggestions that the system may give to you this will be the places um, so different uh, states cities uh, uh, clinics where you can uh, get your clinical rotation and if you click to one of them you'll be able to see the detailed information so what to expect what they offer what kind of the uh, departments they have in which directions you can also make um, your application very simply by clicking just apply now so you'll go to the system again start uploading your documents it is much more easier easier than the JAMIC so here also everything is done online you are uploading all the documents online uh, there is also there is also no restrictions no timeline so you can do it any time during the whole year uh, the exception is uh, only these two free rotations uh, because like if you decide to participate in these free rotations you have to register here during one month um, at the office manager's uh, desk. Uh, so next one is again your documents part where you just attach your documents so uh, nothing. Uh, complicated here and uh, the other part is invite uh, your friends or your colleagues or people you know so actually the uh, AMO opportunities they have also some discounts for example if you offer this opportunity to your friend and you send it to your friend by the email they make like a hundred dollar discount for you if you go um, for example if you go with your friend, like two or three people's group, they also make you some discounts. So this may be asked and negotiated with the AMO opportunities representative. So you can also ask them uh, questions about this. And. Uh the last one is your preferences, so you can also uh, edit your preferences, preferred months, preferred specialties, preferred locations, for example you want to go to some states so you don't like for example the northern states and you prefer more southern states, so you can choose all of uh, these places and according your preferences they will be offering you uh, these clinical uh, rotations. And uh, the last one, this is the website how it looks and they have the online chat so you can go there and ask them questions. 
um, any time you'll be able to send uh, them questions or requests via the system when you are registered and you are also able to send a message so they um, uh, usually reply in a really in a short short time so you, you don't have to wait for one week or like more so they, they are answering really uh, very quickly and will answer all your questions so uh, these are two new programs that we have here so again I'm asking if you have any questions Okay, I think we are finished, so I don't know. If you have questions, you can ask me. Um, if not, you can still come to my office and ask, but please, for like shorter questions, not, don't make me to explain this whole process. Okay, thank you. Yes.